Have you ever wondered what happens in the last 10 minutes before death? It's a question that might sound morbid, but it's one that science has some fascinating answers to. We all know death is a part of life, the final chapter in our physical existence. Yet, the precise process of dying is something we seldom talk about, often shrouded in mystery and fear. Today, we're taking a deep dive into this rarely explored territory, aiming to shed some light on what occurs in the body during the final moments of life. Now, this isn't just about satisfying curiosity. Understanding the physical changes that occur before death can help us better comprehend the human body's resilience and complexity. It can also provide comfort and guidance to those facing the impending loss of a loved one. The human body is a marvel of biological engineering. Its systems from the circulatory to the nervous work in harmony to keep us alive and functioning. Yet, as death approaches, this harmony begins to falter and the body undergoes a series of changes. These changes are not random, they follow a pattern, a sequence, much like the final act of a well-orchestrated play. Each stage of this process is a testament to the body's struggle for life, its tenacity in the face of the inevitable. However, it's important to note that this process isn't the same for everyone. Factors such as the cause of death and individuals' overall health and even their environment can influence the body's final performance. This journey we're about to embark on isn't for the faint of heart. It's a voyage into the depths of human biology and mortality. It's an exploration of the final frontier of life itself, the last 10 minutes before death. We'll be examining the onset of Algor Mortis or the cooling of the body, the heart's final beats, the brain's last stand, and ultimately, the last breath. Now that we've set the stage, it's time to delve into the intricate details of the human body's final countdown. As the body begins its final countdown, the first change is a gradual drop in body temperature, a process known as Algor Mortis. Now let's dive a little deeper into this. Algor Mortis, also known as the death chill, is the second stage of death and marks the beginning of the body's transformation. It's a fascinating yet chilling process that takes place as the body starts to cool down. This happens because the metabolic activities that generate heat cease and the body can no longer maintain its usual warmth. The process begins almost immediately after death and continues until the body reaches equilibrium with its surroundings. It's a gradual process, much like a fading ember after the fire has been extinguished. This chilling march towards equilibrium is relentless and unyielding, a stark reminder of our impermanence. The rate of cooling varies and is influenced by a number of factors. The environment plays a significant role. A body in a cold room will cool faster than one in a warm room. Similarly, a body that is clothed will retain heat longer than one that is not. Body size and weight also play a part. A larger body with more insulating fat and muscle will cool more slowly than a smaller one. But it's important to remember that Algor Mortis is not a solitary process. It's part of a sequence of changes that occur as the body shuts down. It's like the first domino in a chain setting off a series of events that lead to the body's final transformation. As the body cools, other processes also kick in. Rigor mortis, the stiffening of the muscles, begins, the blood begins to settle, causing discoloration, known as liver mortis. Each of these changes, driven by the ceaseless march of algor mortis, moves the body further along its final journey. So, algor mortis is not just about a drop in body temperature. It's a complex process that marks the beginning of the end, a silent herald announcing the onset of death's final countdown. As the body cools, other processes also kick in, leading us further into our countdown. While the body cools down, the heart, that tireless engine, starts to stutter in its rhythm. As the final countdown continues, the heart, our body's indefatigable powerhouse, begins to falter. This muscular organ, which has been tirelessly working since before we were even born, starts to experience changes in its rate and rhythm. The heart rate, which is typically between 60 and 100 beats per minute in a healthy adult, begins to fluctuate. It may speed up in a desperate effort to keep the body functioning or it may slow down, succumbing to the overwhelming fatigue. Simultaneously, our blood pressure, the force exerted by our blood against the walls of our blood vessels, also begins to drop. This decrease in blood pressure is due to the heart's struggle to effectively pump blood throughout our body. Now, envision this. Our heart, the dutiful sentinel that it is, is trying to maintain the flow of life-sustaining blood, but it's fighting a losing battle. As it weakens, it becomes less and less efficient at pumping blood, leading to a decrease in the amount of oxygen being delivered to our body's various parts. 
Our organs, tissues, and cells thrive on oxygen. They need it for their survival and function. Without it, they begin to falter and ultimately cease to function. This oxygen deprivation begins to manifest in various ways. Our skin may turn pale or a bluish color, a condition known as cyanosis. We may become disoriented or lose consciousness. This struggle of the heart doesn't happen in a vacuum. It's not an isolated event. It's part of a series of interconnected changes happening within our body as it approaches the end. And the brain, that complex command center, is acutely aware of this dwindling oxygen supply. With the heart's rhythm faltering, the body's oxygen supply dwindles, a change that doesn't go unnoticed by the brain. Deprived of its vital oxygen supply, the brain begins to shut down, but not without a fight. This is a time of great turmoil as the brain, our command center, finds itself under siege. But what exactly happens during this time? Let's delve into the fascinating, albeit unnerving, process. The brain is a complex organ responsible for our thoughts, memories, and the essential functions that keep us alive. Without oxygen, the brain is like a car running on empty. It's only a matter of time before it comes to a halt. The first thing the brain does in this dire situation is a kind of power management. It starts shutting down non-essential functions to conserve as much energy as possible. This could mean a temporary loss of peripheral vision, difficulty in speaking, or even a complete loss of consciousness. But the brain doesn't go down without a fight. In its final moments, it can produce vivid hallucinations, often described by those who have had near-death experiences as their life flashing before their eyes. This phenomenon is thought to be the brain's way of scanning through its memories, possibly in a desperate search for a solution to the crisis at hand. Some researchers believe that these hallucinations are a result of the brain releasing a flood of endorphins and other chemicals, perhaps as a way to ease the pain and fear associated with dying. Others theorize that the brain might be transitioning to a dreamlike state, a final attempt to escape the grim reality. Despite the brain's valiant efforts, reality eventually catches up. The lack of oxygen becomes too much to bear, leading to a complete shutdown. This is not an immediate process, but a gradual dimming of the lights, so to speak. As the brain makes its last stand, the body enters its final moments, leading us to the end of our countdown. In the final moments, the body takes its last breath, a sign that the end is near. As life nears its end, the body's breathing patterns undergo significant changes. It's a profound process, almost like a symphony, with each beat leading to the next, each breath paving the way for the inevitable close. Primarily, there's an observable shift towards irregular and interrupted breathing. This is often marked by periods of rapid, shallow breaths, followed by slower, deeper ones. You might even notice periods of no breath at all, a phenomenon known as apnea. These changes are all part of a pattern known as Cheney-Stokes breathing. Named after two physicians, Dr. John Cheney and Dr. William Stokes, who first described it in the 19th century, Cheney-Stokes breathing is a distinct pattern of cyclical breathing commonly seen in those nearing the end of life. It's characterized by a gradual increase in the depth and frequency of breaths followed by a gradual decrease that leads to a temporary stop in breathing, the apnea phase. This pattern can be disconcerting to observe, but it's important to remember that it's a natural part of the dying process and not typically associated with discomfort or distress for the individual. It's the body's way of slowing down, of conserving energy in its final moments. As the end approaches, you might also notice a particular sound accompanying these erratic breaths. It's often referred to as the death rattle, a term that might seem unsettling but it's simply the result of air passing through the residual mucus and saliva in the throat. This sound, while disconcerting to some, is usually not indicative of any pain or suffering. As we reach the end of our journey, the breaths become fewer and farther between, until finally the body takes its last breath. It's a quiet, peaceful moment often unnoticed until its absence is felt. With the last breath drawn, the body comes to rest, marking the end of the final countdown.